Okay. Uh, now, what we will do is we will uh, make a list of some of the things that um, uh, we will look, go through the list that I have prepared, which one must take care of during conference presentations, and then see whether there is anything that you had left out. Okay. So, a talk should be audible, visible, lucid, and interesting. So, shall we say it was audible? at least to this uh, particular uh, audience, right? It was audible. And uh, things were visible. I mean, the font size, visibility includes this important thing. Lucid. What would you say about whether the talk was lucid or not? As here, we have different backgrounds. If it is something background is given, to them, then it is easily understandable to others. Good point. Um, the introduction of the subject. That is where uh, perhaps you could have done a little bit better, okay? Uh, because this audience is mixed. That is where the audience should be borne in mind. So I think uh, if you would have done the same talk to set of students or working in your area, uh, I think it is fine. But when you have a mixed audience, uh, which will happen in conferences also, because uh, it may not be as mixed as this where you have people from different uh, de departments, but still, they will be working on different problems. So, um, you can work on the introduction a little bit more. You can introduce a topic in a way in which it appears um, of interest to everyone. How do you think, uh, for instance, we could have done that in this talk? Anyone wants, uh, anyone has some suggestions? Huh. Uh, he could have explained uh, the uh, working of a MOSFET and the IDVG curve, which he was referencing uh, by using uh, the lookup table. So initially, if we know how whether how the curve is obtained and how the lookup table helps in uh, getting the required uh, result that we want, so mm -hmm. that would have been better. Okay. So one of the suggestions is that he could have begun by um, let us look at his look at his slides. So. We could have uh, had an introduction to the operation of the MOS transistor. Now, um, if you examine this suggestion critically, what I think is uh, the title of the talk is Interpolation Schemes in Lookup Table. The MOSFET is only uh, an example that is being considered. Uh, I wonder whether you could have avoided the MOSFET altogether. Do you think the MOSFET could have been avoided so that people would not have got, uh, you know, prejudiced that, you know, it is, you are going to discuss something about the MOSFET and I don't understand the MOSFET, so I get switched off. Because the talk is about interpolation schemes, not necessarily of the MOS, for the MOSFET. At least the MOSFET doesn't appear in the title. So, uh, because the interpolation schemes for lookup table can be general for any lookup table, any set of data. You can have, uh, so that is one suggestion that, you know, I could make that if you can think of avoiding the MOSFET for a mixed audience like this, then you would focus on your uh, central idea a little bit better. If you look at that uh, uh, slides, you make that uh, transistor as a uh, that, uh, I mean, outline or, and he is talking about MOSFET. It might uh, click that uh, PJT and FET also is come in the picture. So directly, if we if we if we go into the MOSFET, then the title should be MOSFET related, not the transistor only. Yeah, that is something uh, uh, you are saying in a different way than what I said. While presentation, he was making an eye contact with only you and some people ar uh, around you, uh, but uh, he has never never seen over here any people. So that is one problem. Yeah. So um, and he was little bit fast. So speed of uh, speaking one can reduce, and uh, better eye contact, which you can uh, develop by experience. So the reason why it uh, looked at partly biased uh, looking at that side because the computer was there. So <laughs> yeah. So no this reason. is how you can see. I'll. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thanks. So this gives you a, gives you an idea of how the arrangement present 
yeah. can uh, you know uh, have an impact on the way you your posture so this is very important so what i would suggest is that uh, whenever uh, you know you have to make a talk okay or give a talk you please uh, go to the place and um, one day in advance if possible or at least uh, several hours in advance and familiarize yourself with the uh, you know various uh, arrangements and if you can give a mock kind of thing to yourself you can stand and then do it or if you have your few friends of yours then this kind of teething problems can be avoided unfortunately different places have different arrangements okay so it is good to familiarize yourself with the arrangements right it improves the impact of your presentation the point is those 20 minutes or half an hour which you get you can make immense impact this is something that you must uh, appreciate okay if you make a good presentation you will be remembered okay so it is a great opportunity for you so to uh, repeat again uh, you uh, go to the place several hours in advance and familiarize yourself with the location of the various things over there so lucid interesting we have uh, pointed out that introduction is a very important element of the talk uh, if you can introduce a topic well you know you can make it interesting so one must work on the introduction okay in any talk let us uh, move further uh, interest depends on contents so what can be contents of a talk facts concepts principles and procedures there are the four types of things one can have generally the suggestion is avoid too many facts because people have difficulty you know uh, grasping too many facts too much data and so on one can use concepts and principles they are very interesting because concepts and principles are ideas procedures are also okay but again you do not discuss all details of you know procedure unless the procedure itself is your uh, central contribution if you have developed a new procedure of doing something or you are talking about a new procedure then it is all right to you know use um, i mean focus on that otherwise facts and procedures are kept to a minimum are best kept to a minimum and concepts and principles are given importance okay then the talk is interesting eye contact as someone has already pointed out uh, variety interaction this is a uh, short talk so i think we can uh, avoid this particular issue of interaction during that 10 minutes or 15 minutes uh, how many slides you had let us look at the number of slides yeah. uh, fine a total number of slides was 14, 14. so that is okay uh, normally the suggestion is you should have uh, on average one slide per minute not that you must change slides every minute the if you want to find calculate the total number of slides you should have right uh, it should be around one slide per minute average of that when you um, restrict your number of slides automatically you will develop length on one slide okay if you flip slides uh, too often what happens is it is like something you know uh, uh, it is like a uh, film being played uh, at a very rapid pace so one cannot uh, gather anything from there so but i think 14 is okay it's not too bad uh, coming back to the variety uh, activity diagrams your uh, slide had diagrams audio visuals is not an issue here uh, pace of speech someone pointed out that it was fast uh, particularly uh, since we are talking about international context in general outside india uh, you must speak much more slowly than we do in india okay this is very important there is a, uh, a nice uh, quote for good oral communication you think fast but speak slowly you think fast but speak slowly it takes a little while to um, you know get adjusted to this normally uh, we speak fast when we think fast our speaking is uh, you know connected to thinking now i mean unless you make special effort so a teacher acquires the skill of speaking slowly uh, because you have taught for a number of years 
Okay, it takes a while to delink the pace of speech and the speed of thought. So this is something one must uh, practice. Pitch of the voice. To some extent, I think your pitch was, uh, it was all right, but you know you could have had more variations. It tended to be a little bit monotonous. Length of sentences fine. Uh, pauses, you could have given. Uh, pauses between the sentences. There, I think there was scope of, for improvement. Repetition. Did you use <coughs> uh, repetition to emphasize some idea of yours? I think you didn't. Right? If there are uh, a few points that you wanted to emphasize during the talk, you did have a conclusion. Okay? So your talk had the, your out outline was perfect of the talk. It had the various elements as they should be. It had an introduction, it had a conclusion and so on. Uh, but within the uh, talk, one can repeat a few points okay, that helps people to uh, gather right, what is central in your talk. Gesturing with hands, one of your hands was tied because you were using the mic. So, but still other hand, perhaps you did use the hand to point. Now this is one of the things that happens. Now this kind of pointing, it really does not help okay, in conferences. So uh, we need to understand this. Uh, that requires some practice. Uh, because you see, uh, pointing like this, you really don't know to what you are pointing. Only you know. Others don't know. It is something far away, right? It is like uh, a mother showing the moon to the child, right? It is something like that. So, uh, you have to use a pointer. If there is no pointer, then you must get used to uh, using the mouse and point. So, one must avoid using the hand without a pointer or a mouse. Also, uh, like you uh, tended to use the hand, many times what happens is, people have a pointer, but they do not use the pointer to point. They simply use the pointer and you know use it like a hand. It does not help. Then another uh, uh, problem is, sometimes people do use the pointer properly in the sense, they uh, press the button and then, but they keep the pointer on. Uh, for too long a time on the slide. Meaning, as you are reading the slide, they will move the pointer, right, as an underline. Now, that is not what is expected. A pointer should not be used like that. Then it loses significance. It is only supposed to be used to point to some part of the slide, okay, for some uh, specific duration. It should not be on all the time, right. It is not like moving your finger under the line when you read. So this is why weakness which many people have. So some of the must planning. So planning uh, includes uh, going to the place where you want to give the talk and looking at the arrangements. Right? This I have said already. Rehearsal. Title slide with author details you had, short and catchy title. Uh, you think the title could have been catchy or more catchy? I do not know. Is there any way title could have been catchy? That is, one can spend uh, some time on this title and introduction. And summary and conclusion that you had. Audience, background and size. So like people have pointed out, uh, perhaps you should have taken into account the fact that it has a mixed background. Duration. Shorter talks are more difficult. I think, uh, but uh, your number of slides and so on uh, were okay. Location close to the audience, not behind a desk or to one side of the screen. It is strongly advised uh, that sometimes you have this podium. Okay? Uh, interestingly, uh, speaking from behind a podium is not supposed to be the most effective way of speaking. Though people do uh, stand behind the desk of a podium okay? they, and sometimes they keep their hands on. But if it is possible to leave the podium and stand in front of people, right, with your entire body facing, it has uh, more impact. When you stand behind a podium, only your uh, kind of upper torso and the head is seen. And it should not be to one side of the screen, as far as possible uh, towards the center. Speech should be slow and varied. Uh, this point has been discussed. Slides. Lettering at least 24 point. 
this 24 uh, point font is a minimum that you need to have for any lettering. So the title uh, should be bigger than the text. That is always there. But the point is, you should not try to put more text um, by reducing the font size. It's not good. So automatically, once this font size is fixed, amount of text also gets you know, fixed. It will not be too much. Then one should use Arial font. Okay. Um, in general, the advice is that when the font size is large, 24 is considered a large font size. You must use a sans serif font. Sans serif means a font which does not have corners. Times New Roman is a font which has corners. For example, so letter I can be like this or it can be like this. Now, in this case, you have corners which are protruding out. Okay? So this particular example, there are no corners. So this kind of font is referred to as sans serif. That is without serif. Serif implies the corners. This is a serif font. Now Times New Roman is a serif font, serif type font. Arial is a non uh, sans serif type font. So for uh, PowerPoint presentations and so on, it should be sans serif. Aesthetically, it is more pleasing. And also, it is easier to read. But for small size fonts, you are advised to use serif fonts, Times New Roman. What is a small size? Say 12 and less is a small size. Font size 12 and less. Color, uh, use only few colors. So you have used only two colors, blue and black. That's good. Don't try to use too many colors. You are advised against using too many colors. Text, short sentences, no running text. I think more or less uh, your uh, text was short. Let us see whether any sentences could have been made shorter. Because you need not be, uh, it need not contain all the uh, words, right? Let's look at this slide for example. Um, can we reduce the number of words? Normally one has a base level physics model and many fitting parameters to account for the effects and get better accuracy. These are what are known as compact models. So uh, perhaps one way of writing this point, let us look at it, right? What, how we can improve it by uh, reducing the text, that is a point here. Perhaps one could uh, write uh, right next to this uh, particular uh, pointer, you can uh, put compact models, right, as a word and a colon. Because that is what you are discussing here. And then one can say that if one can write it as base level physics model plus fitting parameters accounting for secondary effects. Right? That is it. And then you write the equation. So this way one can reduce the text. It is not necessary to uh, the sentence to be grammatically, you know, all elements to be present. That is the point here. So which is what you have done. For example, here you have said basically a switch. Right? You, have, you could have said the MOSFET is basically a switch, but you did not do that because already a diagram of the MOSFET is there. So it is understood. So one can see whether uh, other places the text can be reduced. So number of slides, uh, one per minute, excluding backup. Now this is the uh, suggestion. Now supposing you feel that um, it is good to have a few more slides because people may have some questions. So you can keep them after your, uh, the slides uh, corresponding to your talk, right? You have some additional slides. They may or may not be used. They are called backup slides. References on the slide under discussion rather than at the end. This has been pointed out already. A logical transition while changing from one issue to the next can be done by posing a question. You can see whether your talk would have uh, been made more interesting by posing question when you make a transition from one idea to other. So you can describe the situation and say, now, how do you think we can do it? And then you come to the point. Instead of saying this can be done as follows, right? That is what is meant by posing a question and making a transition from one. Then anticipate questions the audience may have and address them in the talk before the audience thinks of these things themselves. So this is a part of planning. When a question is asked during a talk, answer immediately if it will clarify ambiguity, else postpone it till the end. So it is a good point. Um, good uh, practice to answer the question then and there, if it is possible. But it should be a short answer. 
It should not be a lengthy answer. Then what happens is the audience loses track from where you started. If you cannot answer a question, say no. Say, you say that, you know, I don't have an answer. But you don't try to beat around the bush. Avoid long answers. Use pointers sparingly. This I have already pointed out. Uh, how the pointer should not be there all the time on the slide. Do not wear dark or dull clothing. So I think there are just a couple of slides about oral communication which we will uh, go through and then uh, end for the day. The art of listening. It is found that uh, good communicators are also good listeners. And vice versa, those who are not good listeners are not good communicators. Okay, So listening and communication, research has established a link between them. So how can you be a good listener? A good listener make uh, so good listeners make good communicators. Don't assume that you know what someone is going to say to you. A good listener is one who doesn't assume beforehand. Sometimes there is a tendency on the part of people to show that you know I'm smart. I mean you don't have to tell me everything, right? I, I know what you want to say, right? This kind of uh, attitude sometimes people have. So they don't wait for the other person to talk, right? I mean even before you talk, okay, I, I know this is what you mean. This is not good. You let the other person, you know, talk. Unless, of course, he is going on at length and so on. Ask questions if you do not understand. Restate and rephrase what has been said to you before responding. This is also a good practice. You can rephrase the question in conferences and, in fact, you should use it. After a person has completed his question, then you rephrase it in a short form and then you answer it. Listen to the tone, volume and emphasis before interpreting the message. What are the prescriptions for improving communication skills? Read aloud a newspaper for 10 minutes every day. This is like singers who practice daily singing. Okay. So it is not necessary to have anyone around. You can just do it to yourself. Record and listen to your own talk. Practice in front of a mirror. For example, posture and so on. You can improve a lot. If you practice speaking in front of a mirror, people have used all these techniques to improve their communication skills. So some websites are uh, suggested here, which discuss about uh, how you can go about improving your oral communication. So read books on public speaking. And finally, very, very important, listen to orators and good teachers. Now, um, all of us have gone through uh, several courses in which we have heard good teachers. But when we start teaching ourselves or communicating, immediately we do not become good uh, communicators. Even though we have heard teachers who are good. The reason is, unless you make a special effort to concentrate on the way a person is communicating, okay, you cannot um, learn the elements of communication skills. When, you are, when we were uh, learning subjects as students, we didn't bother so much on how the person was communicating. We were more interested in understanding what was being taught. And because a person communicated well, if a person communicated well, we understood the thing better, we said he's a good communicator. So we only understood the subject, but not the method of communication. So what one must do is, one must listen to good teachers, not from the point of view of understanding the subject, but learning how to communicate. So this is very important. So you see, you know, where does a person pause, what kind of sentences uh, the person uses, how he or she varies the length of sentences and so on. All these things you must concentrate on, not the understanding of the subject. Then you will learn the communication better.